I have honor tonight to tell you something about the subject I choose by myself the subject and I call it the role of Muslim minority in Swedish society. What is our goal here? Of course all Muslims here like the other people living in Sweden want to live safe life here. This is our primary goal. But how to reach this, this goal? This is the question. And it's not very easy to give answer, especially today, after all these happenings in the world. But like professor of history, I can tell you, that it's not the first time in Islamic history that Muslims came to live in one Christian country. It happened before a couple of times that group of Muslims came in one Christian country like refugee to live there. And God's will was that it happened in the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So God's will was and God gave chance to the Prophet Muhammad and his friends to teach us a lesson. How should we Muslims we Muslim minority in Christian country behave in that country which gave us safe life and freedom of our religion. I will tell you exactly the story shortly what happened in the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after Muslims were no longer feel safety in Mecca, Prophet Muhammad decided to send a group of weak Muslims in one Christian country called Kingdom of Abyssinia, Ethiopia today. And only reason why Prophet Muhammad chose that country to send his own people, his own followers, and not only followers, in that group of Muslims, Prophet Muhammad sent them in that Christian country, was some of his relatives, like his daughter, Ruqayya, and her husband, Uthman, third Khalifa, after Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and also his relative, uh, Jafar ibn Abi Talib, and a lot of his friends, and also one of Prophet Muhammad's wife, Umu Habiba Ramla bint Abi Sufyan. So this was the sign that Prophet Muhammad, he was believed in the justice of that country. He was believed of the justice of that Christian country. And only reason, like he said, to them, you will go in that country because the king, the ruler of this country is just and he will be fair to you. This was only reason. And they went to that, to that country, but Arab of Quraysh, the enemies of Prophet Muhammad, they sent two men to this king. And they asked that king to expel all Muslims from his country. And they said to him that Muslims don't respect Christianity like religion. 
of course this king he become uh, upset because of that information I left them to live in my country I uh, gave them safety safe place to live and they don't respect my religion and he called them to ask them in front of all people what they think about Christianity and about Jesus we call him Isa in our religion and Muslims they came and King asked them openly what do you think about Jesus what do you think about Christianity and then one of Prophet Muhammad's relatives Jafar ibn Abi Talib he started to recitate some parts of Quran which mentions Jesus and his mother Maria with the greatest respect with the greatest respect and Jesus is mentioned in Quran 24 times with his name and one big part of Quran called by his mother Maria Maryam so we Muslims we respect Jesus like one of the biggest gods prophets and also we respect his mother and this is only woman mentioned by her name in Quran Maryam the only woman mentioned in Quran by the name is Maryam or Maria the mother of of the Jesus after this king of Abyssinia saw the truth so that Muslims respect Christianity right, like religion they respect Jesus he promised them that he will give safety place for them to live as they respect the Christianity <coughs> and Jesus in return Muslims were respect the rules they they were respect the rules of that Christian country and some of Muslims lived in that country more than 15 years and history was not record a single case that any of them did any crime any kind of crime in that Christian country so God wanted this to happen at the time of prophet like I say and God gave a prophet Muhammad chance and his friend to give a big lessons to the later generation of Muslims how to behave in one Christian country because Muslims in that country are minority <coughs> the other example I gave you is also from Islamic history and also from the time of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him when the Prophet sent one of his delegates in Yemen Yemen that time also was Christian country and before he sent him there he gave him a couple of advices first advice he gave him he said to him you are going to the country where are the followers of the Bible listen to this where are the followers of the Bible did he say to them to him go there cheat them go there kill them go there steal from their gold no he say to him first thing 
you said him about who Allah is and who I am. And the last advice he gave to this man, one of the biggest scholar in Islam, Mu'adh ibn Jabal, he, he gave him advice. Be careful. Don't be unjust to them. Because God does not reject the prayer to whom injustice is done. So this is advice to who? To every Muslim want to go to live in Christian country. Want to go to be minority in Christian country. So the Prophet didn't teach his followers to steal, kill and cheat people of another religion. He teach us to be useful to the society and to stay away from all form of injustice to society. Also, I will tell, I find two speech of Prophet Muhammad in the book of Ahmad and this speech is very strong. True Muslim is one from whose tongue and hence other people feel safety. So this is the true Muslim. You can't be true Muslim if the other people does not feel safety from your tongue and your hands, of course. And in this hadith, in this speech, Prophet Muhammad, he didn't choose only Muslims to be safety from you. He say the other people. So in this other people are included Christians, Jewish and all other people, non-Muslims, of course. The second speech, a true believer. So if you want to go to paradise, you have to be a true believer. And listen to the speech of Prophet Muhammad. A true believer is one from whom other people's lives and possessions are safe. This is very clear. So, we, as we see, Islam does not have problem in communications between Muslims and non-Muslims and the other people. But we can see today that some Muslims have problems in communication with the other people. Islam does not have that problem, but some Muslims have. Why? Because that Muslims, they don't know, they didn't learn Islam well enough. This is the problem. This is the biggest problem. But we, we cannot condemn Islam because of the actions of individuals we do not, who do not know Islam well enough. As we can't say for Christianity, this is the religion of terror, because there was one man called Andras Breivik. He killed innocent people, thinking this is good for his religion. And now we can say uh, the, the, the Christianity is religion of terror. This is nonsense. Like we can say for Islam. We can say for individuals, and we can say this indi that individuals, they don't have big connection with any religion. As we want to feel safe in this society, we want to show that society needs to feel safe from ourselves. As I want my son to be safe from the racist like Breivik, and the people like him, I also wish that all children in Sweden feel safety from me and from the other Muslims. And the only way to reach that goal is to learn young Muslims, our children, real Islam. Only then they will be able to, sell, to save themselves from any forms of crime, from the drugs,
from alcohol and also only that way they will not become the victims of internet self-claimed Islamic schoolers. This is one of the biggest problems we Muslims have. You know, when I was working like Imam in Irtebori, I had a lot of problems with young people because of their connection uh, by internet with some people all around the world. This kind of people, they call themselves uh, Islamic schoolers, but they didn't learn Islam, any university, any big Islamic scholar. They learn Islam by internet, but it's not learning Islam, you know. So uh, I had my phone open to all people and many of them, they call me and they ask me some questions and some of that questions were very, how to say, unusual. For example, okay, Imam, I have one question for you and I don't know who is from the other side. Okay, ask me, can I go in Ika and still from there? Stealing is forbidden in Islam. It's big sin. Yes, but this is a non-Muslim country. I have fatwa from someone that I can steal. From who? I read on internet. Mm -hmm. That was the problem. The other one asking me, okay, I got married here in Sweden, in mosque, in front of Imam. But I read on internet that my marriage is not correct because I have to get married in, in front of Khalifa in, in Iraq. You know, <laughs> this, this, this is a very big problem, you know, connection between our children uh, and young Muslims with these internet self-claimed schoolers. So we should teach our young Muslims here, our children, real Islam what Islam is, so they will be able, when they grow up, to cut this connection between them and that kind of people, they call them in wrong way, in incorrect ideas, of course. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I, I hope this will not be the last time we meet each, each other. Allahu 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 Allah Allah